Welcome to Backstage with Jeffrey Morrissey. This might aptly be called Conference Room with Jeffrey Morrissey, but the company is just as special. I'm joined by Colony House today. Thank you all for joining me. Would you mind just introducing yourselves to our listeners? I am Caleb Chapman, and this is Park Cottrell. I'm Will. And this is Scott Mills. And we're Colony House! That's what we like to hear. You guys have gotten very good at that. It's a uh, it's a talent, to say the least. But uh, so the last time I saw you, you were at the Sinclair. You're back at the Sinclair again tonight. How's everything been since October? It's been good. We've released an album since October, and we've uh, been on tour since October. We've played a few television shows since October, and we've gotten to spend some time at home before we, we went on the road since October. So it's been good, <laughs> all good things. That's true, this is your first headlining tour. Is it about what you've expected, what you thought it might be? Yes and no. I think more no. Someone can maybe expound on that. There are people coming to the shows. There you go. And it's great. Like more people that, you know, more people than we thought would have come, which is a great thing. That's always good to hear. It's better than playing to empty rooms every night, that's for sure. Trust me. Yes. Well, the rooms are not lonely. The album is named Only the Lonely. It's the story of, uh, I, I read in an interview somewhere that, uh, Caleb, you said, it's the story of our experience with the first album and what doors it opened. So I guess in a broader sense, what was the experience with the first album? What doors did uh, that album open for you? I think the first album was an experiment, which all first albums are, of finding the voice of the band and learning how to be a band, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the doors that it opened were touring. We toured like crazy off of that first album. It was the first time we really, I mean, we had been, we had toured before the album came out, but like after the album hit, it was just nonstop on the road. And I think the people that saw us, um, we met people through that, that opened doors. We, you know, just naturally started like building a little bit more of a following throughout the United States um, and even got over to the UK and Europe um, on that album. And so I think it was just Only the Lonely is a natural piggyback off of the first album in the lessons that we learned through touring a lot. Like I, I think even and then when we started the recording process, we, I think, refined what we had done on the first album you guys had done something crazy what was it 200 shows with the last record about their oh record? yeah at least mm -hmm. 200 i mean it it was probably like it was a year. oh so, wow so, so probably, probably like four, three, not 400 but like three, the whole cycle maybe who knows it was a lot <laughs> an obscene amount do you do you guys plan on doing as much touring uh for this record or do you want to kind of scale it back a little bit we don't really know. We want. We feel like we're at a place. We do love touring, and it's where we feel like we make the most impact um, as a band. We're trying to figure out how to be smart tourers <laughs> uh, because tourists. Tour, tourists, I guess. Yeah. Uh, just because we're getting to the point where you know, like when we played 300 shows in a year, it was because we were, or not in a year, 300 shows on the last cycle. It's because we were trying to get people to see us. And and it's still true. We still need people to see us, but we can't just go burn through 200 shows in a year and expect people to keep wanting to come back and see us five times in the same venue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, It's been a grassroots thing, and it still is, but now it's shifting. So we're trying to figure out what that looks like. We are willing to. We are just trying to be smart, and because I think there's a certain point where that could maybe even hurt you if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. No, totally. And and you are all family men, which is important to note. Uh, I know mm -hmm. Caleb, you have a kid, but you're all married. Yep. Uh, how do you stay connected to home when you're on the road? How does that process usually work? Uh, FaceTime is huge. Beautiful we, mention. We, yeah, indeed. We could all go around and kind of give our two cents on how we do it, but we, um, I try to fly home whenever I can, I think all of us, or fly, for me it's a little different because I have a kid now, a young one, so it's harder to fly them out, but a lot of the wives will come out every now and then. Um, and it's just, I mean, then home is not necessarily home, yeah, like a place, it's kind of where you're connected and, and when you get to be with your family, so even if it's out on the road, that's, I think, us connecting with home. 
Oh, nice. That's what we like to hear. Well, now, speaking of home, y'all are from Franklin, Tennessee, correct? Yes. Now, I know that another big band, as I said, we were an alternative station from there, is Paramore. Mm -hmm. uh, are they sort of like the hometown celebrities? Did you sort of always grow up aware that Paramore was from Franklin? We, we're, yes, because we're friends with them. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, so I guess um, Taylor York was a, a dear friend of ours, our family, um, for a long time since i mean my our dads worked together and so we've known taylor forever the pharaoh brothers um obviously i know it's the um dna has changed in paramore throughout the years but when the pharaoh brothers were in it i guess zach's coming back but we went to church with those guys all growing up and have known the pharaohs for a long time the only one we don't really know is Haley. Uh, that will but yeah they're definitely hometown heroes um, and are awesome nice nice so this is your uh, second album only the lonely uh, the first of course was when I was younger uh, what did you learn from recording when I was younger that you brought to only the lonely uh, let's all say something including you park park wasn't necessarily a part of the band during when I was younger That's but true. but he still probably learned stuff I learned that I learned that vulnerability is just as important in the music as it is in the lyric. So we wanted to capture that on Only the Lonely More. Like, I think there's a lot of vulnerable lyrics in when I was younger, but I think production-wise and musically, we were not as vulnerable. We, we were a little safer. Um, still very proud of the album, but I think Only the Lonely we just colored outside the lines a little bit more for our band. Um, like we've mentioned before, we spent a lot of time touring on the road for when I was younger, and I think that there became a point where our live show was kind of like outrunning like the record a little bit. Uh, like we had all this kind of like raw energy in the live performance, and then the record was like really polished. And so going in to record Only the Lonely, we wanted to kind of recapture some of the live energy by you know we did songs like all together in a room as a band um and we kind of like caleb alluded to like kind of stretched ourselves musically on our instruments to kind of to kind of rope in some of that like live energy from the show and not not make every sound have to be like the perfect thing or every note have to be the perfect thing kind of uh let ourselves uh, make up for some of that with the uh, like the energy yeah. I'd say the same thing Scott that's kind of the vibe I was gonna go down the live kind of route uh, I feel like after playing lots of shows you develop really good instincts as a band and I think that there were a lot of moments um, Scott you just dripped some water on yourself um, in case you're wondering listeners <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in regards to instincts I feel like because half the record of Only the Lonely we tracked live together, there was a lot of moments that wouldn't have happened otherwise had we not been just, like, in the same room. And so we kind of just would, you know, there's there's a few moments where we just kind of kept flowing at the end of a song that we weren't planning on doing, spontaneity, I guess, uh, and just kind of trusted where each of us were taking each other musically, and it, it ended up making some really sweet moments on the record perfect and, and i do want to say that you guys have a great thing for titles when i was younger it was a great uh title as well only lonely too it's a great name and it really captures the pluses and the minuses of loneliness and solitude was that something that you thought of a lot of before touring or was that something that more was a product of you're on the road so much that now loneliness was more prevalent definitely a product of touring i i, I would say that i loneliness is always prevalent and that's why we wanted to talk about it on this album for us touring made it like brought it to the surface mm -hmm. so we we really wanted to try to find something that tied a thread um through all of us and through what we felt like the listeners could connect to and we thought that that, that was a theme that was kind of hitting us really hard at the time and so uh yeah we felt it important to kind of just talk about it well one way that you could make it less lonely is if you were to add a fifth member to colony house mm -hmm. anyone in the world who would you guys add as the fifth member of the band you can each have someone different too 
Um, Anthony Bourdain. Ooh. You would so never that eat he a bad meal again. Make us food every day, but not necessarily <laughs> appear on the stage. He would be like a behind the scenes kind of folk. Tour dad. Yeah, Tour, Tour dad. dad. He's a pretty awesome guy. So, Anthony Bourdain. I don't know, man. Uh, hmm. Lenny Kravitz. Uh, Santana. <laughs> um, oh, shoot. I'll try. I was going to say Rob Thomas just to cap off the Santana thing. <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah. but I, I, will, I will stick. And you know what? Because this one's only the lonely, it's only right that we add Roy Orbison to the, oh, to the group to become. Would we be like the second? Um, never mind. Yeah. Roy Orbison. <laughs> he could open for us. Yeah. And we could play as his band. That'd be per- like. Or um, we, could we could open, open for him. him. <laughs> oh, and he's. You've invited him on the tour. Right. Exactly. As a special guest. A special guest. Special guest Roy Orbison. Well, I know that uh, this is a little bit of a, a sibling band. Uh, Will, Caleb, do you have a favorite story from childhood? Or like a favorite sort of like maybe first musical memory that you want to share with our listeners? A musical memory? Or it could just be from childhood, too. Okay. Well, I like the music. We'll stick with the music memory as childs. <laughs> Childs. Children. Child. Uh, we... Whoa. Let's see here. Well, our first band was called Two Car Garage, um, and it was in first grade, I think, was when we started Two Car Garage. Mm-hmm. Our first song was called Football in the Air. It was awesome. <laughs> and uh, we, we got the band name because Will was missing his two front teeth, and my mom said it looked like a two-car garage. So we were like, yeah, band name, Two Car Garage. And so we became Two Car Garage. We wrote Football in, in the Air. Our first smash hit, the Chainsmokers redid it. Um, <laughs> they were they were they were called the um, Corn Cob Pipes Smokers at the time. <laughs> this is good. And uh, no, no. Anyways, that was our first band. It, me and Will, actually, I started playing drums and he started playing guitar at the beginning. And I broke the drum set, and I was like, Ah, you know what? This isn't for me. And I, we changed, and it stuck ever since then. So. We've been playing music together since we can remember, and yeah, we used to put concerts on down in the basement. Yeah, mom and dad. Get our mom and dad have flashlights, so we had some lighting, and so we had. Uh, well, let's. Do you remember any of the song names? Yeah. Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer was one, and yes. Football in the Air. That's all. That's it was our hit. So, hit. Yeah. yeah. There we go. There we go. Well, you guys have a busy day ahead of you. I don't want to keep you too long. I'm going to leave you with this. Who are you guys listening to right now who's been out playing in the bus, the van, the venue, etc.? A band called CRX. Uh, it's Nick Valenci from The Strokes, his band. And it's what's new that I've been, I mean, I mean, still, it's the new Kings of Leon record's amazing to me. True. I'm still listening to that. So. I've been listening to a lot of like older music that I feel like I should have been familiar with a long time ago. And also, uh, so last night I listened to a bunch of weird old David Bowie records in the van, and it was awesome. <laughs> uh, and then um, Low and Heroes are are the two records that I was listening to. And then the band that's opening for us right now, Deep Sea Diver, I've been listening to their record a lot because it's awesome. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but some friends of ours have an album that's not out yet and have given us said album and i we listened to it yesterday and i was reminded of how good it is it is sir sly's new album and hopefully they put it out really soon because people need to hear it well this all sounds great uh colony house has been the band the album is only the lonely you can catch them playing it live right now if you have a little bit of spare time do us all a favor and look online to see if there are any demos of two car garage i know that everyone would love to hear it and let us know if you find those (laughs) exactly well thank you guys so much for joining us today and have a great one Thank thank you